Hello everyone, so today I'm going to talk about how I'm planning my revision for Easter. At the moment it's a week till Easter holidays and so I really want to make sure that I'm going into the Easter holidays knowing what I'm doing with a plan so that I don't spend the first like few days just deciding what to do and wasting that time. And hopefully the things that I'm telling you that I'm doing will help to plan your revision if you're also doing A-levels this year or GCSEs as well I guess. Okay so the first thing for me is to have a daily plan of what I'm doing. Now as I've said in my previous revision video that for me I think planning everything out day by day in terms of what topics I'm going to be doing doesn't really work because if you miss a day or find one harder and one easier it doesn't give you that freedom of moving stuff around without rejigging the whole timetable which then you spend another two hours doing. For me having a list of revision like tasks that I want to be doing separately from my revision table is the best way to do it but to still make sure that I have some sort of structure to my day rather than just starting the day like what am I doing waking up at a random time I think the best thing for me is to have almost like a school day set times where I do work to the set time and have my breaks set in there my lunch and then have it finish at a certain point because what I really need to ensure is that I'm not procrastinating and then going all the way into the evening and working then because I know that that would not be good for me in any way and I've been really trying to work on having set time that I relax. So as you can see I am planning to start my revision at 7. Now this does seem a bit optimistic and I may have to shift this kind of an hour later. But if it would be possible to start then especially seeing as it's getting lighter earlier and earlier then I can finish my work as soon as possible and also going straight into revision for me I think is quite nice because it stops me from kind of wandering around at breakfast and just gets into it, gets your mind focused and then by the time you eat breakfast I already feel productive and like I've achieved something in a day. And doing this timetable will mean that I finish just before three and that maybe if I do overrun a little bit, as in I like start later, then I shouldn't be going working past four, which means that I still have most of the evening to do whatever I want to do in and keep myself actually relaxing. And I have a slightly different version for if I have to do a past paper for one of my subjects, so that economics past paper could be shifted into a Spanish past paper because these often do take two hours plus. And I don't want to not do these just because I've blocked out in my timetable that I'm only doing an hour or 30 minute segments. So I think that's something really important to remember because even though working in shorter segments for me is better because you keep your concentration high, if you do want to have to do stuff like past papers, which are really good for revision, you don't want to have the whole timetable blocked out in only 30 minute chunks and for this to like stop you from doing the past papers because it's not fitting in your timetable. Another thing I think it's really important to do is to also just block out the days where you've already got plans and you know you won't be able to do revision or that you've got plans in the evening and they might slightly shift how you're going to revise that day. I think first of all it's just nice to know that you have got plans in there so that to break up the Easter holidays and also to keep an eye on like when they are, I don't know, it just makes me feel a bit more like organised and have my stuff sorted out. <laughs> So now moving on to my main focus for Spanish. These are just the things that I want to spend most of my revision time doing in order to get myself ready for my mocks and then my actual A-levels. If you go back and watch my prospective revision timetable video, I think it shows how I set up all of the kind of subsections of the course in a prospective timetable. But just to give an overall idea of what I will be focusing on, for Spanish this will be vocab for the listening, reading and writing paper and a bit of grammar. Then for the oral paper I need to go over all of the topics that I've done, make sure I know any key facts and figures and just have a general knowledge of each topic. And this will include researching a bit to make sure I have the notes because I haven't quite finished notes for all the topics. And also for my IRP, which is also part of the Spanish oral, I need to make sure that I know all my facts for that and have learned the introduction fully. And then for the writing paper, which is the play and a film, I just need to make sure that I have all the kind of key vocab around that learned, because obviously there's a couple of things that come up in the film that will just come up generally in our vocab. I need to make notes of the quotes that I want to learn, flashcards, and test myself on them to make sure I know what they're And just go over like the themes and start playing the other way about so I don't know how I'm going to learn that, yeah. But I have a quote, so I'm going to digest all of that information. 
fashion and in the amount of time to do some projects. Now moving on to economics. Um, I have a micro mock straight after Easter and I just had a macro mock so I'm focusing probably the majority of my vision on micro just to boost that up to the same level as my macro but I need to make sure that I do keep that macro just still in my head all the way through Easter maybe doing a couple of past papers going over the spec points just checking myself and making sure I have application knowledge in my head and for the micro revision I use Upland to revise mostly so I'm going to do the whole of the Upland course for theme three at least and touch up bits of theme one that I'm not as sure on because that's last year's course and then I'll go through and do all the recall sections on that plan which just help you like start to learn any like factors of stuff or things that affect stuff and then after that what I found really good with my macro was to just get out the spec and go through the spec and make my maps and then just fill in all the gaps so I just do a like tiny subsection, mime up as much as I can to kind of try to answer the spec points and then fill in those gaps and just do that as many times I guess as possible and also go through Upland and pick up all the application bits that they've got in there because they've got some really good application that's all summarised and I won't need to go research it myself but I do need to pull it out and learn it. And of course for that as well, past papers and some paper three past papers maybe because that is a mixture of micro and macro and that exam obviously is coming up at some point but I'm not sure if I will get around to that in Easter or whether that will have to be something that waits till after Easter. And finally I thought a really important thing to add was I've also got a plan for after Easter just in terms of when all my exams are just having laid out my mocks when my exam days are, even though I've got the times in my actual Outlook calendar, but just so I know when they are roughly, have the half term put in there. So just as you can see here, they're all there ready for me to see at a quick glance. And so I can look at it and go, I have this many days in between this paper and this paper, so I should probably be revising that paper in all of that time. Or like just having an idea of what I should be revising in which section of the exam period would be really useful. So that's everything I want to talk about today, thank you for watching and please comment down below, tell me what subjects you're taking and at least we can all go through this together. Thank you for watching, bye!